everyone and welcome to the retro channel this right here is a sony vega crt it's a 14 inch trinitron and it is brand new still sealed in box uh, i believe this came out around 2003 2002 maybe and that's pretty much just based on the shipping label on the side here which says march 2003. so what i want to do today is open this thing up see if it actually works and powers on and I guess also check out, you know, some geometry and uh, convergence. See what experience you would have got with a brand new CRT from the early 2000s. Now, I think this is one of the sort of flatter CRTs. So generally geometry is not great on those. And I actually have a Sony CRT just in front of me off camera, which I think is about a 25 inch from around the same era. And uh, yeah, geometry is not great on that CIT and I've spent way too many hours trying to get it just right and still haven't accomplished that, but uh, it's a lot better than what it originally was. But uh, today's video is about this one. So let's open this thing up, see what's inside. Yes, there is not a lot of height between the box and the camera on the bench here. I usually don't have something this tall. Uh, on the bench and it looks like there are still staples holding the box together so I'll try not to destroy the box too much but eh, what are you gonna do leave it in the box forever I don't think so all right well it's not just a Sony, it's a Comfort. Interesting marketing speak. They are a brand new set of Sony AA batteries and a little a uh, Ballon uh, connector for an aerial for 75 ohm to 300 ohm or the other way around. Little getting started manual, plug in TV, turn power on. Around the side, we have a little remote control. Um, obviously, this is a fairly budget small screen CRT, so there's not too much going on here. Oh, we have a pair of rabbit ears. That's nice. Not that we're gonna pick up any analog TV these days. So shiny. It smells like plastic. There's a little hole for our rabbit ear antenna. Are there any handles? Yes. Spin the box around this way. And we should be able to lift this thing out. Box be gone. Well, here it is, our little 14 inch Sony CRT. So on the rear side, we have a little approval number and a double isolated symbol, square and a square. Sony KV PG14 P10, 70 watts it uses, serial number 1012911. Here's our little power cord, which is has a little hook for itself. It's always nice. Simple two prong, so no earth connection on this. Not that there would need to be because there are no exposed metal parts, apart from obviously these plugs, which would be uh, isolated anyway. Pretty standard affair on the back. We've got an antenna input, a left or mono input and composite video input. And there's also an audio and composite video output. So I guess you could hook this up to a, a VCR or something and record the signal that the TV is picking up. Looking at the front of the CRT, the screen is somewhat 
dirty. I think that's just from being stored away for a while. Uh, there is a little flap which reveals a couple more inputs and some standard buttons, headphone jack, nice clicky power button, and of course the infrared remote and a little power LED. That is about it. Now, although the front of this does look flat, I think it's actually got a flat panel of glass on the top because the screen does look slightly curved. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up, but I can see almost like a shadow in the corners. So it looks like the screen curves in and this bit of glass makes it look flat. Nothing special on the sides. Everything's pretty plain Jane. And yes, all very plasticky. Let's uh, plug this in and see what happens. Here we go. TV that's been laying dormant for the last 20 years. Will it work? Well, I heard a... a Oh, I think it works. Oh. Right, I'm just going to switch it to the AV input while I turn the volume down. So, um, yeah, it does appear to work. It's obviously picking up a whole bunch of nothing. And um, that's the way it's going to be with the, uh, the analog input. But um, let's switch it over to AV and I'll hook up something that we can actually display on this thing. All right, so I've just hooked up a Super Nintendo, obviously just by a composite. And I've changed the settings on the camera. So hopefully this should look pretty similar to what I can actually see in real life. Let's go and bring up the 240p test suite, see what the geometry is like on this thing. Um, it looks pretty good to my eye, but uh, let's bring up a test pattern and just check it out a little bit closer. All right, so it doesn't actually look too bad. There is a very minimal overscan, especially on this side. This side's chopped off just a tiny bit, but uh, and the geometry looks half decent. Obviously with the composite video, these little red lines look pretty jagged and where they meet the white lines across the side here look pretty jagged, but that's just composite video. So yeah, not too shabby. Let's just have a look at the convergence, see if we can see anything. It is a pretty small screen, but those dots appear to line up pretty well. I'm not seeing any uh, separation of blue and red. Might be a little bit down in this corner, but yeah, the static convergence. So the stuff across the middle here looks quite good. Yeah, the corners are fairly decent. And on this sort of size screen, you can't really tell the difference from a meter away anyway. So it looks pretty nice. Looking at our color bars, everything sort of starts off pretty evenly down here and goes up to full brightness here. So again, that looks quite good. But yeah, with only a composite video, everything is going to have this horrible sort of jaggies everywhere, uh, dot crawl. Nothing much you can do about that. Uh, let's go with this. Ah, volume. Turned it all the way down. So our little mono speaker doesn't actually sound that bad. And even in the high res Super Nintendo mode, all this text is pretty clear. Uh, it's more just composite video artifacts than anything else. Let's bring up something that might be a bit more familiar to most people. That actually looks pretty good for composite video. Obviously it's a smaller screen and it's a brand new CRT, but um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. I thought there might be some worse geometry issues, but 
Yeah, it looks quite nice. I don't know what the, the TV line count is on one of these things, but yeah, can't really complain about that. It looks quite sharp. Right, so I've just changed the camera back, so this probably looks all washed out now, but I do want to open this thing up and take a look inside just to see what's going on. I imagine by this period, everything is very cost reduced. So we're probably not going to see much at all, but uh, it's interesting. I like to always open things up and have a look regardless of what they are. So let's check it out. All right, so as usual with Sony CRTs, they do put a little arrow for the screws that we need to remove. So that's always handy to have. Alternatively, just take out screws until it opens. These screws do have a nice click to them. My little screwdriver is actually struggling. I'm guessing the threads are still quite tight on these. All right, so nine screws removed and the rear cover should just slide off. Now, of course, with all CRTs, there are some fairly dangerous high voltages in them even after they've been powered off and unplugged. So uh, always be wary of that. If you've never played around inside a CRT, um, yeah, be very cautious. Don't just open one up and start poking your hands in everywhere because uh, that might end up hurting quite a bit. All right, and here we are. And yes, definitely the cleanest CRT I have ever seen that Shouldn't be a surprise because it only just came out of the box. Let's just see if we can slide this board out a little bit. Take a closer look at it. And it looks like this ground connection to the power board is gonna hinder us a little bit. Just unclip the power board. All right, that's about as far as I can get it without disconnecting a bunch of other things. But um, yeah, it gives you an idea of just how many parts are missing from this main board down here. So very much cost reduced and no doubt this chassis was used in other sets that had more features available. But uh, this one, yeah, there is a lot of blank space. What's kind of funny is there is a little connector here. Um, so they put that on, but there's nothing connected to it. Let me just see if I can pop this out of the way. Little rear panel. There we go. <laughs> so yes, there is also a blank space here where the right channel audio connectors would go. Um, no doubt a higher up model had stereo sound, but um, yeah, the back panel has nothing. There are little sort of circles there. Um, but yeah, I, I'm guessing they used, I don't know, do they use the same mold and just different cutouts, uh, like a different template to emboss this stuff? I don't know how that works. But um, yeah, definitely very cost reduced. What's kind of interesting, if we look at it in a profile view, this is a very deep CRT for a 13 inch. Um, yeah, the, the gun itself like the neck is huge especially when you compare it to like one of the Commodore monitors uh, I've got a couple that are I think they're about the same size 13 or 14 inch and they they probably stop around this area somewhere so the neck stops back here so yeah very deep CRT for its size um, yeah apart from that everything looks good and obviously very clean. Um, no signs of leaky caps or damaged components and you wouldn't expect there to be. So yeah, happy days. Um, not very many manual adjustments can be done. There's obviously uh, focus and screen control on the flyback. There is what is probably the horizontal static convergence or HSTAT pot here. And uh, there's a little sort of geometry um, yoke board sitting up here, which does have some exposed points. So you'd want to be careful adjusting um, manual geometry with uh, the set turned on. You probably don't want to touch them while it's turned on. Usually the yoke has, you know, a couple of hundred volts, three, 400 even flowing through it. So um, 
yeah, that could hurt. But um, apart from that, there's not really any other adjustments. I imagine everything is going to be done in the service menu. There looks to be a TDA 8843. I'm guessing that is the jungle chip. Um, so maybe an RGB mod could be possible for this, but I haven't looked it up, so I don't know what the possibilities are. Uh, but for now, we've just got composite video. Ew. Might also notice that the tube itself is actually upside down. So this label here is upside down and the anode cap is on the underside rather than up the top as it would normally be. So yeah, something a little bit different. Then again, the, uh, the big Sony CRT that you can just see off camera over there also has uh, the anode cap on the bottom of the tube itself. So yeah, there you go. A little bit of trivia or something. So the tube has got a model number of KVPG14P10, which is the same as the model number of the TV. And then SCC U62B-A. That is kind of about it for the inside. I'm not gonna play around in here. Um, at least not in this video. All right, so I've had the set running for a few hours now, just playing some games. And what I noticed was there are a few adjustments that should be made. So let me position the camera right in front of the screen so we can see it a bit better. So one of the first things I noticed was having the picture mode set to dynamic results in a very bright but unnatural image. And even setting it to standard is a bit too bright. Um, the soft mode seems to be the closest to a natural image. And looking at the gray ramp, we can see that it is still clipping off some of the blackest or the darkest grays here. So we do need to make some little adjustments. And on the soft setting, the picture mode, which is basically the same as contrast, is set to 60 by default. If we bring that down, normally the contrast would just to adjust the bright, the white levels but you can also see that it has an effect on these gray parts here. So bringing it down to somewhere around 25 actually reveals more of that gray. Uh, and then if we bring up the brightness, we can see that those gray bars have appeared, but it is having an effect on the black background. So I think the best spot here is probably 51. So 51 does reveal a little bit of gray, like very darkest gray there, without making the black look any whiter. Let's just go back to picture mode. And yeah, there is a definite sort of jump when you hit a certain number. So I think somewhere around 28 looks good. The, the whites are still white and we're getting the full uh, black to white pattern. Now for the color, I can't actually adjust this at the moment because I cannot find my copy of Digital Video Essentials, which includes a little blue light filter. So um, I think the color looks about right. It might be a little bit too saturated. Maybe something like 45 is a bit more natural, but again, looking at this on this camera, it may not look exactly the same as that as it does to my eye. So that seems to be a fairly natural image. In fact, yeah, maybe 50 for the color is about right. Now, the other thing I noticed when I looked back at the convergence test, the bottom right corner here seems to have gotten worse over time. So I can definitely see some red separation below these white dots. The rest of the screen still looks pretty uniform, but I'm gonna put up a little picture of what it looked like uh, when we first powered it on, see if that's any different. Cause to me, that looks worse than it did after a few hours of use. So I don't know about that. And of course I wanna adjust the overscan, which is pretty standard on these Sony CRTs. You just need the remote and you press info five volume up and then power on. And that gets us into our service menu. Now um, be wary because things that you change in here can have a very detrimental effect if you just change things at random. So let's first of all, just move the horizontal position over. So 
I believe it's three and six that actually adjust the number. And one and four will actually cycle through the menu. So it might bring the horizontal size down a little bit and push the, uh, maybe, maybe there, move the position over a little bit. So I'm just getting the slightest hint of that outside red border. It is a little bit skewed, so I can see a little bit of red up here and probably less down the bottom, but that's good enough for this TV. And I also want to bring up the vertical size. Now on this CRT, uh, it seems to be uh, VZM, which is vertical zoom. So let's bring that out to somewhere around there and maybe move the position down a little. Something like that looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, that looks better. And to save, we hit mute and then it'll come up with the right and you just press zero. That'll write everything into the, um, the flash memory or whatever it uses, the EEPROM. And then power off and power on. And yeah, that looks a lot better. Let's check the monoscope. Yeah, there is definitely some separation up in this corner here. So the red is going up above that line and the red is dipping below this line down here. So these two corners aren't fantastic, but I'm only running in composite video. So there is some effects of composite video here. So maybe the next step is gonna to be to actually RGB mod this or something similar. So yeah, kind of interesting that the convergence seems to have gotten worse over time. I don't know if it's gonna keep doing that, um, but I won't make any adjustments until it's sort of settled in. So um, in the meantime, I'm gonna continue using this for a little while. I have also looked up uh, options for RGB modding and uh, there may be, an, may be a solution there. So we'll see what happens. Um, could even be an S video mod uh, and looks like it's even possible to have uh, component video with this jungle chip, but um, whether or not that can actually be done because looking at the data sheet, data sheet for this jungle chip, it does use the I2C bus to uh, send or to communicate with the rest of the CRT. So without sort of injecting some data into the, uh, the I2C bus, may not be able to get full control over the jungle chip, but um, I think an RGB mod should almost certainly be possible. So I'm gonna leave it here for this one. I'm gonna obviously, like I said, use this a bit more, research that RGB mod, and uh, if I come up with something, we'll uh, RGB mod this thing. Uh, but for now, that's gonna be it. So as always, thanks for watching the Retro channel. A massive thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon and YouTube memberships. A shout out to Jason, AKA Mr. Lurch, who hooked me up with this CRT. We did a little swapsies uh, a couple of months back. And um, yeah, thanks mate. So for now, that is it. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.